In this video, you're going to learn the algebraic tests for symmetry, and we're going to go through five examples together. So how do you test an equation to see if the graph is going to be symmetric about the x-axis or the y-axis or the origin? That's what we're going to be talking about in this video. And we've got some little rules here that you might want to make a note of, but I want to show you why they work. Take, for example, a point like this point here, 3 comma 1. If I reflect this over the x-axis, it's like folding over that x-axis line. It's the mirror image. You can see that this point would end up right here at 3, negative 1. So what happened? Well, when we reflected over the x-axis, the y-coordinate changed sign to the opposite. So you can see here, when we're testing for uh, x-axis symmetry, we replace y with negative y. And if we get the original equation back when we simplify, then that tells us it's symmetric about the x-axis. Now, say you take this point 3, 1 and you reflect it over the y-axis. That would put you right over here, and notice that this point is negative 3, 1. So what happened here? When you reflect over the y-axis, it's actually the x-coordinate that's changing signs. And so when you test for y-axis symmetry, you replace x with negative x in your equation. And when you simplify, if you get that original equation back, it tells you that it has y-axis symmetry. And then if you were to take this point here, 3, 1, and rotate it 180 degrees, okay, about the origin, like you're turning about this point, you would end up over here at negative 3, negative 1. So what happened there? Well, you can see the x is the opposite sign and the y is the opposite sign. And so what you do in your equation is you replace x with negative x and y with negative y. And if you get that original equation back when you simplify, then it tells you that it has origin symmetry. And keep in mind that it could have x, y, and origin, all of them, or maybe just two of the different types of symmetry, or just one, or maybe that doesn't have any symmetry at all. So that's what we're going to look at in these five examples, starting with example number one. So let's test for x-axis symmetry first. So we're going to replace y with negative y. So wherever I see y, I'm just going to put in a negative y. I usually like to put it in parentheses just to treat it like a group. And then when I simplify, a negative times a negative is just going to give us a positive. And when I look at this equation, is it the same as the original equation? No, it's not. You can see this is negative y, this is positive y. So that tells me that it doesn't have x-axis symmetry, meaning if I fold it over the x-axis, it's not going to match with itself. Okay. So let's look at y-axis symmetry now. Let's replace uh, x with negative x. So if we do that in this original equation, replacing x with negative x, and simplifying, when you have a negative to an even power, that's a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative, you're going to get a positive x to the fourth. And when I look at this equation, you can see it does match the original. So that tells me that, okay, yes, it does have y-axis symmetry. And then let's test for the origin. We're going to replace x with negative x and y with negative y. Let's see what happens there. So we've got negative x to the fourth, replace y with negative y. And again, you can see a negative to an even power gives us a positive. A negative times a negative is a positive. And you can see that this does not match the original, so it does not have origin symmetry. And so in this case, it looks like we just had y-axis symmetry. That was it. Now, you might be saying, Mario, what do you mean x-axis symmetry, y-axis symmetry, origin symmetry? Let's look at some examples really quick. So y-axis symmetry might look something like this, for example. See, if I fold it over the y-axis, see how it matches to itself? Uh, x-axis symmetry might look something like this, where if I fold it this way over the x-axis, it matches to itself. Origin symmetry might look something like this, where if I hold my finger right at the origin and I turn this 180 degrees like the paper halfway, it will match to itself. And so that's what we're talking about when we talk about symmetry. So let's look at example number two now. What do you think on this one? Does it have x-axis, y-axis, origin? It could have more than one. It could have none, right? Let's start in order. So let's replace y with negative y. So that's going to be 2x. Notice the parentheses. And I can see a negative squared is going to be a positive. So yeah, it looks like that matches the original. So this does have x-axis symmetry. OK, that's interesting. Let's check y-axis now. So we're replacing x with negative x. 
Okay, we've got a positive times a negative times a positive. That's going to be a negative 2xy squared. And does that look like the original? No, so it doesn't have y-axis symmetry. And then how about for origin? Let's replace both x and y with the opposite sign and simplify. So here we have a negative squared, which is a positive y squared, times this negative would be a negative. So this is coming out to negative 2xy squared, which does not match the original, so it doesn't have origin symmetry. So in this case, it looks like we just had the x-axis symmetry. So let's write that down. Again, keep in mind, you can have one of these, two of these, three of these, or none of them. Let's look at a couple more examples. Okay, see if you can pause the video and do number three, four, and five on your own to test yourself. But if I was going to do number three, I'm going to follow the same pattern. I'm going to start with x-axis symmetry. I'm going to replace y with negative y. So if we do that, let's see what we get. We've got uh, x equals 2 times negative y over negative y, the quantity squared, minus 1. And I'm going to simplify this a little bit more. So this would become x equals negative 2y over a negative y times a negative y is a positive y squared minus 1. Now, does this match the original? Almost, except for we have this negative here. So I would say it does not have x-axis symmetry. Let's test for uh, y-axis symmetry. So y-axis symmetry replacing x with negative x. So you can almost basically see here, if I replace this with negative x, it's not going to match the other side. So we know that it doesn't have y-axis symmetry. And then let's test for origin. We're going to replace x with negative x and y with negative y. So we're replacing both variables with the opposite sign. And when we simplify here, what's interesting is we get a negative 2y in the numerator. A negative y times a negative y is a positive y squared minus 1 in the denominator. And at first glance, you might say, well, Mario, this doesn't look like the left side and the right side match. It's different from the original. But what you can do is you can multiply the left side and the right side by negative 1. Now, negative 1 is like negative 1 over positive 1. So if I multiply both sides by negative 1 over positive 1, this is going to give us a positive x. This is going to give us a positive 2y and the denominator 1 times anything is itself. Sometimes students mistakenly multiply the denominator by negative 1 and the numerator. Well, negative 1 divided by negative 1 is a positive 1, so you just want to multiply the numerator by negative 1. And you can see that this does match the original. So in this case, this one only had origin symmetry, where we can rotate it 180 degrees about the origin. Okay, so what do you think for number 4 and number 5? What did you get for, for these ones? Now, you might be saying at this point, Mario, can I just look at the exponent? Like if I see the y, the exponent's even, then I know that if I put in a negative, it's going to be a positive. And yeah, as you do these more and more, you're going to basically be able to look at it. And you're going to be able to say, oh yeah, I can see it's got this type of symmetry or that type of symmetry. But you might, uh, on a quiz or a test, have to demonstrate this for your teacher that show that you understand it, that you're like, it's kind of like a proof. So let's test for x-axis symmetry. Let's replace y with negative y. So this would be like, negative y going in for y. A negative to an even power is positive. See, this one I probably could have just done just by looking at it. And I can see that, oh yeah, this does have x-axis symmetry. So I'll just put a little check, x-axis symmetry. Now we're going to check for y-axis by replacing x with negative x. You could probably see that just by replacing this with a negative x, that's going to give us a negative 3x. It's not going to match the original, right? Okay, so it doesn't have the, uh, the y-axis symmetry. And then how about for the origin? If we replace x with negative x and y with negative y, let's see. This gives us positive y to the fourth. We still have this negative here in front. This gives us a negative 3x. And when you look at this, you can see it doesn't match the original. You might be tempted to say, well, Mario, what about that last example where you multiplied by negative 1? We could multiply the left and right sides by negative 1. This would give us 3x plus y to the fourth equals negative 1 still doesn't match the original, so this doesn't have any origin symmetry. So in this case, it looks like it's just the uh, x-axis symmetry. And last example, see if you can do this one, 8x squared y squared minus 2 equals 0. And while you're doing that, I wanted to let you know about my two video courses that I have for sale, my Algebra 1 and my Algebra 2 video course for sale. So if you like the way that I explain things and you're thinking to yourself, you know, Mario, I wish you were my teacher. Can't you just come here and teach my math class? These courses are, are very much like that, where I take you step by step 
through a typical Algebra 1 course and a typical Algebra 2 course with uh, the theory and the uh, explanations and example problems and some opportunities for you to even practice on your own and then we go through those problems as well. So those courses are really helpful. Links in the description below. And if you just want to support you know, the videos I'm putting up here on my Mars Math Tutoring YouTube channel, I uh, encourage you to join and become a channel member. So for a few dollars a month, you can support the channel. And I see all of the uh, YouTube handles or the, the channel names that come through. And so I really appreciate the support of my channel members. So consider doing that. What did you get for number five? Did you get x-axis, y-axis, origin, two of them, three of them, one of them, none of them? Let's go through them. So for x-axis, we replace uh, y with negative y. And let's just talk through this. So if I put a negative y in here, a negative y squared, that's going to be positive y squared. You can see you're going to get the original back. So this does have x-axis symmetry. Let's put a check there. If we replace with y-axis symmetry, we replace x with negative x. And again, you can see if I just replace this with negative x, negative x squared is positive x squared. I'm getting back the original. So it does look like it has y-axis symmetry. Origin, I make these both negative. Let's maybe demonstrate that one. Let's write that out. So replacing x with negative x, y with negative y. A negative squared is a positive negative squared is a positive, and you can see we're getting the original equation back, so that tells us it has origin symmetry. So in this case, it had all three, and so great job, you got it. So if you want to see more examples, you want to test yourself, you want to practice more, or just want some more explanation, follow me over to a previous video that I did on the same topic, talking about algebraic tests for symmetry. I'll see you over in that video.